Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webcast. We're really grateful that you all could join us tonight. My name is Brandy Meeks. I'm the Vice President of Operations for And Then There Were None. And my co-host, Kelly Lester, is here with us this evening. Over the next hour, we're going to be discussing some trending topics about the abortion industry. And tonight's a little bit different than usual. Um, we're mixing it up a little. We're going to discuss a new initiative that we launched last fall at And Then There Were None and tell you about some success that we saw in the great state of Tennessee this month. So this is the plan for tonight. As always, I'm going to do my best to make sure that we stay on time, wrap up in the next hour. We're going to do intros, and then we're going to dive into some questions. So make sure you send yours in. Uh, we'll do our best to get to it. This is also being recorded. We'll be sharing a link later on. So if you see something that you think somebody else needs to hear, you can share this video with them in the next few days. I want to preface our conversation tonight, as always, with an appeal to any current ab abortion industry workers that could be watching Please hear our hearts when we say that we're here for you, no matter what. No judgment, just real help. And then there were none. We understand that you may have started working in the abortion industry, believing that you were helping women. Um, and that can be the reason for leaving, too, is because you truly recognize that uh, you do want to help women. And you um, can see now that the abortion industry is not doing that. So let's, let's get started. Let me introduce you to Elizabeth Matori. She is our Vice President of Government Relations for our ministry. Liz, we're so excited that you're hanging out with us tonight. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Yeah. Can you give us a little bit of background on some of the cool things that are going on that um, are making a real impact um, with the, the workers' voices right now, um, specifically in Tennessee? Right, so uh, first of all, thank you for this opportunity to connect with our audience. Um, this is um, sort of new for me. Um, I love the fact that I'm not interviewing <laughs> attention. I'm like on the reverse end. But um, Abby wanted to sort of ramp up our, uh, our act. can I use the word activism? I guess that's the right sure. term that came out of my mouth um, because for about now nine, 10 years, um, our organization has been focused as it should on our workers and our quitters. Um, and so she believed, and a few of us believe that there's a point in time where we could use our voices to really not only let more people know the truth about the abortion industry, but really affect real life-changing laws, if you will. Um, so I joined the team at the summer and, you know, we were focusing all on DC, but for better or worse, the election shifts <laughs> um, the strategy to more of a statewide um, approach. And so speaking of which, uh, one of the legislative assistants um, who was working in Tennessee reached out to one of our sister organizations about um, this new bill that they were pushing um, in, in Nashville. And so long story short, um, we got in contact with her, um, Kelly, what you'll hear from Kelly also about her experience and another one of our uh, quitters were able to literally, it was like Thursday, Friday, book flights for Monday, Tuesday um, to get them to Nashville. Like this was the first time that quite frankly, someone else besides Abby was able to testify officially in that official capacity. Um, there were long story short, there were a couple of few committees, um, but I don't wanna get too far into it. Um, but lo and behold, we believe full, full fledged that it was the Lord that really got us to this point because not only is it another element to our organization, but Kelly obviously will speak to it. It is, there's so much more that our quitters can do to get more people to believe the heart, the harsh nastiness, I hate to say that, but that's the term that came out of my mouth, about the abortion industry. Mm -hmm. And testifying mm -hmm. is just, that's what we're able to do. Yeah, excellent. And it is exciting because like you mentioned, it's the first time that, I mean, Abby's story is pretty well known at this point and it's been fantastic, but there's only one Abby, right? And so when it comes to being able to be in multiple places, it, it 
doesn't lend itself that opportunity, right? Um, and so and another thing is like when we started this webcast, part of the purpose for it was to um, amplify the message of multiple workers so that people could see that it wasn't just her story, right? When you hear different, different people speaking on this that have similar experiences, shared experiences, um, you start to realize that this isn't just one person's story. This is a systemic issue. Um, and so I think that this is uh, just another very valuable extension of that and reaching into a population, um, specifically legislators, to have their eyes opened. I mean, most of, many of them are, already have their opinion very formed on this issue. But I'm sure that seeing someone um, like Kelly, right, being able to talk with her and look in her eyes and hear her experience really does uh, make an impact on them. And Kelly, I'd like to hear also, like, what kind of impact did it make on you? Um, what was that like? Yeah, it was, It like Liz said, it was a whirlwind. You know, it was something that we had sort of very recently even, I mean, it had only been, what, two weeks, Liz, that we kind of had the idea and started the process of having a panel of quitters who could speak on legislative stuff. I mean, that's a brand new idea that we had. And then all of a sudden, you know, we get the call, hey, court's happening, can you guys come? Um, <laughs> and so we did. Um, and it was, you know, I've spoken to churches, I've spoken to pregnancy resource centers, I've spoken on the stairs at the Supreme Court to thousands of people, and I have never spoken where I felt the weightiness of what I was saying. Because in that moment, you realize that you're not just telling your story. You're telling the story of thousands of women who have been in the abortion industry, um, not only as workers, but being that I'm post-abortive, you know, as women who have gone through abortions. Um, and so it's definitely, it's like you can feel all of those women behind you, you know, and you're, you're up there speaking for them. And it is, thankfully, Tennessee was a very friendly audience on the whole, but there were those that were not, you know, there were senators and, and representatives that were right in front of us that didn't like what we had to say and didn't want to hear what we had to say and were very vocal in the fact that they didn't like and disagreed and even combative at, at points. Um, so it's again, not talking to a pregnancy resource center where everybody's pro-life, you're talking at people that are very pro-choice um, and are against you. And, and we even had um, a row of people from Planned Parenthood right behind us. So it's like in front of you, you've got people that are against you. Behind you, you know, you've got people that are against you. Um, and still you stand and speak. And um, it's, it's one of the most uh, difficult, but yet powerful things I've ever done. Um, and I can't wait to do it again. <laughs> that's awesome because I'm sure there are going to be many more times that are going to come up especially since you ladies have seen success for sure hello it's it's all right it's right. always I, always baby, I actually didn't mention I didn't mention um what the bill was <laughs> so really quickly so um the bill that well I don't want to T tell the ending but it's the fetal remains bill it basically offers it, it makes it a law for abortion clinics to offer the opportunity for uh, mothers to either cremate or bury the remains of their of their baby, right? Um, if they don't wanna deal with it, then the abortion clinic must either cremate or bury the fetal remains, just as if any other human from whatever part of their life is treated with dignity. Mm -hmm. um, our other um, quitter that was able to, to testify to it, the normal course of action, sadly, realistically, but unfortunately, is that the fetal remains is not even thought of as a baby or a fetus or what have you. They're literally treating it as if it's 
medical tissue, therefore medical waste, and therefore thrown in the garbage, which is like hazard bag, whatever they do with it, it's up to them. So um, for a former abortion clinic worker to say, um, I had to piece together baby parts to make sure everything was removed for the mother, even pro-lifers were shocked because, you know, for me, like I used to be pro-choice blindly, if you will, former Dem, whatever. I thought it was a woman's right to choose, you know, like body autonomy, blah, blah, blah. But I admit, I never thought that much about the fact that we are talking about tiny babies. Let's talk about the abortion that abortion industry, and this is the part that Kelly definitely can speak. Yeah, about. yeah. And yeah let's talk about let's talk about that part a little bit more <laughs> before we get too too much further. From what I understand, sure. there were laws in place to protect animals better than what there were humans. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Like, what did you guys like as you were? Was this brought up? Was this so, Yeah, we were, it's funny, we were all sitting, we had gone through the first committee, the special committee, which no one expected this bill to go through. Um, Planned Parenthood wasn't even really prepared for a fight, like they didn't even really step up or, you know, to speak or anything. And we came in and gave our testimony and changed the vote. I mean, truly changed the vote to where it went through. And afterwards, we were all sitting around in the Senator's office and the senator who, who presented the bill, because there's a, a representative who first initiated the bill, and then there's a senator who has to also sponsor the bill. Um, and so the two of them were meeting together to kind of talk about what had happened and you know kind of go through it. And I was, it's funny, I was sitting in her, this is the Lord, I was sitting in their office listening to them kind of talk, and it hit me. It was like God telling the disciples to go get the coin out of the fish. It was like one of those moments, and I was like, you know, at the vet, when your pet dies, you have to, get, they ask you how you want to dispose of the pet. And everybody just kind of went, wait, you're right. Is that a law? And so they looked it up and sure enough, that is not just a nice thing that vets do. In law, if a pet dies at the vet, they have to give the owner the option of how they want to dispose of the pet in a ethical way. And so it was like, oh my goodness, this is a big key that here in Tennessee, we say that it has to be disposed of, but we don't say how it has to be disposed of. And certainly not ethically has to be disposed of. And we definitely don't give the moms a choice. So that was a key that it was definitely the Lord gave me a nugget, you know, and, and it ended up being something that was used in every argument. That was something that was said because it's such a shocking um, right. thing that is that is reality that in right. Tennessee and other places right. and then you know this idea of you know the whole argument against abortion even for atheists for example is that it's human it's human life you know nowhere ever have we gotten a right to end a life of another human um, and so when you start getting very odd I guess on pairings, if you will, like PETA, for example, is helping um, the Center for uh, Medical Progress in California about the ethical treatment of animals, right? Um, for all intents and purposes, we are animals as well. We're a different type of animal, right? But even an organization like PETA sees the, the, the importance of treating a fetus now dead because of the abortion now of fetal remains with dignity. And um, Kelly would mention the people who were, you, it was full on like, again, like more power to y'all because I was, so here I was trying to like tell people like, okay, you know, like make sure you like, make sure you're, you're very like professional and you don't lose your cool. <laughs> like the one time where I had to like speak, I was just more so introducing our quitters, you know, but they wanted me to talk on one of them. And so one of the Dems, cause I said, I'm a former pro-choice, I'm a former Democrat. Now I'm very pro-life, very conservative. 
they don't want to hear that. You know what I mean? They don't no. want to let other people know that, shoot, if they get me to shift on this one issue and I'm the demographic they're literally trying to abort, if you will, then all bets are off, right? So this guy was just, just po poking at me. It's, it's not even like, it's not physical, but it felt like they just like poke and prod at you. And I kind of like, was like, I kind of got a little sassy. <laughs> Because it's like this guy, this for all intents and purposes, very, you know, is, is whatever, white dude, right? Telling me that I don't care about women. You know what I mean? That's their argument. They feel as if every single thing that we're doing is anti-woman. And I'm like, you can't, there's a, there has to be a point in time where that argument stops when you talk to women Bro, like I was just so, I was like, oh my God, I'm so glad I'm just here to introduce y'all because I would have like, well, I mean, Kelly, I mean, gee. Well, I'm sure you guys absolutely surprised them. I'm sure they did not see this coming, right? Um, and so mm -hmm. I am curious about that kind of response. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, obviously, I and mean, I'm talking about the other side, not seeing you coming, um, because I don't think they made, they didn't seem to, once they found out you were there, they probably tried to put more of a game plan together, would be my guess. Did you see any of that happening? Well, for, well Brandon, really quickly, it's not just that the pro-abortion industry movement doesn't want us to testify, for example. The other element is the fact that this is the first two, three times where pro-lifers have been able to articulate so boldly and so emphatically what really does happen in abortions. You know, that is the issue, if not the opportunity for, and then there were none, and quitters and people who leave the industry. Y'all are the ones who know the truth. Nobody else, nobody else can testify to it. Not even, unfortunately, the, the mothers, because as Kelly will say, you're drunk the whole time, right? Yeah, I mean, it definitely, it, it changes the conversation a little bit. Not a little bit, it changes it a lot. Because if you are a woman who has chosen to get an abortion and you have effects from that abortion, that's unfortunate. A pro-choicer would say that's unfortunate, but you chose to do this. It mm -hmm. was your choice. So that's one side of it. But when you have workers that come in and talk about what really goes on behind those doors and the manipulation that happens and the, the depravity that happens, the way that the women who come in are treated, the way that the workers are treated, the way that you know everyone that's in that industry is treated and treats the fetuses as well, the babies, it changes the conversation from this is something you wanted to, why is this like that? You know, mm -hmm. why, why is this done like this? Why is this treated? Like, it's not, the knee doctor doesn't treat people like that. You know, the, the ear piercer doesn't treat people like that. So why is this happening in this one specific industry so consistently? And that's back to Brandy, what you were talking about, why having the quitters now speaking it, not just being Abby, because she could have been at one clinic that had a bad situation. But mm -hmm. when you have North Carolina, Virginia, Louisiana, Texas, California, you know, when you've got all these places, it's not just one bad clinic. It's a systemic thing that happens in this industry. And people don't believe that. I mean, they've never heard that. And like you said, even pro-lifers, when we were telling them our stories, they were like, while we knew it was bad, but we didn't know it was that bad, you know? Yeah, like grown men move to tears, like, yeah. because it's like, and that's the thing about being, I guess, I don't wanna say an older woman, but a little bit, you know, a couple more years, you know, on our on this, you know, being. What do you mean, I'm 19. Um, I'm just saying, <laughs> like, it's like, you know, like people always ask me, why did I, what made me, what made me switch from pro-choice to pro-life, right? It wasn't just one thing for me, but one of the few moments were seeing the next generation born, right? 
being at that point where it's like, okay, we're in college. I remember when you got an abortion, like, and now you're excited about having the child that you want to keep, but bro, like you technically have two, you know what I mean? Like no offense to that woman, but it was so surreal for me to interact with folks who, you know, that you have another child, you know what I mean? Like, no, I'm not saying that or thinking that in a malicious way, but I wonder, I'm like, do you just, do you just push it out of your mind, you know? And knowing that this person is still full on, you know, in, um, I guess, defending the right to choose, as far as you're defending the right to choose, your child would have been five, your child would have been eight, your child would have been 10. Like, I'm sad for your child and it wasn't even mine, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it has to be compartmentalized. You know, it, it, that's the only way that you, that's the only way you can work in the industry. And that's the only way as somebody who's post-abortive, you can, especially if you haven't gone through a healing, you know, but if mm-hmm. you're still pro-choice, you have to compartmentalize it. And it's like, I tell people that go to clinics and, and stand outside, you have to understand these women and these workers have scales over their eyes. Mm-hmm. They, they have bought into the lie because they have to. Mm-hmm. And so the only way that they're going to get the truth is like, Liz, what happened to you? What happened to me? You know, the, the scales come off. You can tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them. But until those scales come off, it doesn't matter. Um, and I, I agree with what you were saying. I mean, I, I remember when I, there was a point when I, you know, got a little bit older and I would see somebody and they'd be like, oh my gosh, how old are you? And they'd say, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you could be my child. And that came out of my mouth. And then I was That's like, real. That's real. You, know, like, That's real. you could actually be my child, you know? And when that realization started hitting me that, that I would have had a child, it was like, that was a whole, I had to go through a period of mourning of like that. I had a child that age, you know? Um, but that was only once the scales came off. That was only once I was opened up to the truth. Um, and so that's what, you know, that's what we have to pray for with these legislatures, these mm-hmm. legislators. We have to pray that the ones that are up there, you know, and that's what we were doing when we were, when we were sitting in the peanut gallery as they were praying. We're like, you know, I, I know Pam and I were both just praying, God, take the scales off their eyes, open their eyes, let them hear what we're saying, let them, you know, let them see what we're, what we're doing and not keep that hard scale um, over their eyes. And, you know, I think the Lord did. I think it right. did because we had some people vote awesome. and, and change. So let's talk about that. So you go out on the first week, you go out on a, on a Tuesday. Is that accurate? Am I getting this right? Am I getting this Monday, Tuesday? It was like one was Tuesday, Wednesday. What? So we left Monday to testify Tuesday and Wednesday. Okay. The first okay. So you testify right. Tuesday and Wednesday before who? Who are you in front of? Uh, so, right. So the first step was um, to be introduced on the on the house side. Um, initially, the way that Tennessee does it, um, it goes to a subcommittee. So the subcommittee on health, right? That, what Kelly had mentioned, is totally real, where the chair of that subcommittee was like ready to pound the gavel and kill the bill before they called roll call. So... Um, another element to the whole scales falling off of one eyes is the fortification of people who want to do right, but feel as if they are not being supported by the establishment, whatever, whatever you want to call it. There are a lot of people, even in the Republican Party, sadly, that does not want to, to get rid of abortion. They're, they want to say for, you know, campaign purposes, they're pro-life, but when rubber hits the road, they'll kill bills like this, right? So even that moment was a God moment, right? Where one of the legislators was like, I call a roll. So that means that everyone who says I has to articulate, I say I, and then they count the nays. There were like two or three nays. Like, so therefore the bill should have and ought to have gone past the guy's gavel but he wanted to kill it. Where, where would, where'd that come from, right? So mm-hmm. moving on, they knew that there were two out of town to, uh, witnesses, okay? Some people were trying to give an issue, this, that, and the other, but Lord, regardless, after the testimony, 
it was like those women had to be heard. And that five minutes went viral in Nashville. No kidding. Like by the time we got to the office, all the assistants had watched it. That's the other element where your guys' testimony, right? The, the quitter's no, testimony. Their testimony. <laughs> yes, yes, but Kelly. But Sorry. Yeah, so what I think what Liz, so to kind of simplify what Liz is saying. So Sorry. the bill, the, it's okay. No, it's okay. No, no, we're, we're, we're the layman here, Brandy. So we're going to give <laughs> very it true. a simple it's Very true. We're going to. Yeah. Oh, no. Look, I bit. learned so much about this all for the state of Tennessee, but there is a list of bills that they're going to hear. And so there was thought that it wasn't even going to get heard because if one guy gets up and takes a really long time, they only meet for an hour and a half. So they have an hour and a half and whatever they hear in that hour and a half is all they're going to hear. And we were like bottom half of it, like, you know, right in the middle somewhere. So they were thinking, you know what, there's a chance y'all aren't even going to get heard. It'll get pushed back to next week which since we traveled in from out of town and, you know, families and stuff, it was like, oh, that's not ideal. Well, we met with one of the set, one of the representatives and he, after we met with him, he was precious. He said, I'm going to cash in my chips with the speaker to make sure that you all get heard today. Now we hear that and we think, oh, that's really nice. That sounds great. But you know, is he actually going to do it? Right. Yeah. So then we come up and and time is going and going and we're going, oh gosh, oh gosh. All right, we're going to get heard. And then the bill before us, the guy talked forever and ever and ever. And we're like, oh my goodness, we are not going to get heard. We're going to miss. Well, he finally finishes and the, the guy, the speaker says, so we hear that there's some out of town speakers. We're going to go forward and hear this bill. Are there any objections? Everybody says, no, there's no objections then what they do is they call an oral vote. So I always think they like tally it, but in Tennessee, first it's oral. So if you agree, I, if you disagree, nay, right? So he says, okay, on he basically on hearing this bill, are we going to hear it or not? And everybody says it at the same time. Well, it was a lot of eyes and a very little nose, but the speaker says, okay, that's the nose have it. We're not going to hear it. And we're all like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? And the speaker is a Republican. Okay, let's put it that. He's a Republican. So everybody's like, what? Wait, they're not even going to hear it. And then one of the people said, like, no, we want to take a count. So then they each have to voice their thing. And it was over, it was five to two. So we we're all like, okay, we get to hear it, you know? So it was like one thing after another, after another. And then we got up and, and then originally only the other quitter was going to get to speak because of time, because they only allow a certain amount of time. But we went up to support her. They were going to let us to go up to support her. Well, I ended up, they let her speak. They let me speak. Liz, did they let you speak on that time too? <clears throat> no, no, no. They said, does anybody else want to speak after um, the other person went? Okay. And then I said, Kelly. And so, <laughs> so this is the other thing too. So Kelly didn't prepare anything to say, right? Because no. we were just there for solidarity. Like, hey, we're here as representative. We could introduce our names and our organization. That's what happened. And only have one three minute um, testi um, testimony. So from that testimony, it's sort of like, let the legislators be like, we need to hear more. Like, yeah. like let, these, let these women speak, you know? Like, it was just very much a moment. And I was like, Kelly? <laughs> so then was Kelly, shaking like a leaf. I was going to say, how did, like how, did, how did that go down exactly? Like, uh, I know you got to well, be nervous, and, but. Well, and just, the whole time I'm like, you know, I should prepare something just in case. <laughs> Like I should prepare something just in case. And I'm like, no, I don't want to get my hopes up and not speak. Well, then when they're like, I'm, I'm like up there standing, knees are shaking, I'm shaking like a leaf. And then I just spoke. I don't even know what came out, but I just- Oh my word, talked. it was the most perfect, like, because, because what happened was you had heard their like, her, either heard or felt their um, resistance, right? And the whole idea of we as pro-lifers are anti-woman, right? Yeah. But you were like, hold it right there. Um, I'm post-abortive. Like, boom, 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 boom. Can't deny the truth. Mic drop. <laughs> like, it was awesome. <laughs> 
Well, okay. and the pro the the Planned Parenthood lady behind us did drop her drink. I think when we finished. <laughs> she was like fumbling. She was like she wasn't like ready. Um, well, what what happened was they they didn't sign up in time to mm -hmm. testify. So uh, if you look at some of the news coverage, they'll say, "Oh, they didn't allow them to speak." No, you didn't sign up in time. Like it happens a lot. So yeah, yeah, that happened. makes sense. Okay, so that week is done, right? Like you guys are done. I'm sure I know that you're circulating and building relationships and and make my making friends probably making some people not so um, happy <laughs> as well. Um, you go home, you come back the next week. What does that look like? Right. So before we went, I think that the girls had an earlier flight, but one of the Dems reached out to me and met me on Wednesday. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole nother story. I wrote an article about it. You can look at it fine. But the next week was the second house hearing, which is the full health committee, which is again, it's just how the sausage is made, right? And thank goodness the Senate would hear it, but in the judiciary. The other element to this planning travel was that they didn't set, they don't set their calendar until Thursday, Friday. Mm -hmm. So I was like, uh, ladies, I know this is a huge ask, like children, work, like coordination, but we might have to go back up in the next week. And so thank goodness, you know, you were like, we're like, we're committed. We want to see this through. And so that's what happened with that. Fantastic. So you go back the next week, you make another splash then. Um, how does that work? Well, out? Kelly wrote her, Kelly actually wrote out her speech. <laughs> that time. I learned my lesson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So then the next time we um, knew that Annette was going to get to speak at the house, right? And then all of us that came down would get to speak for the Senate. Um, and so, you know, we prepared our speeches, but ended up that we got to speak at all of them. Um, and it was, it was good. So the, the first one was the full house. Um, and we definitely had some friendly faces in that crowd, which was helpful, but we also had some really not friendly faces. That was where you had your little I had a little moment, yeah, like I had a little, like, I was oh, like, oh, you got a little, I just do that now, well, what happened, what had happened was, right, no, so it was the full house, um, full health, health committee, committee on health of the house, and so we're not just talking about 10 people, we're talking about 24 people, right, so um, if you think about it, the room's bigger, there are more people, um, and now they're also on notice, right? They heard, like they weren't ready for the first week. So we were like, boom, boom. But then the second week, of course, Planned Parenthood signed up. So they had an opposition or uh, yeah, opposition to the bill. And then they knew uh, sort of like planning. I didn't want us to say the exact same thing, right? Because I didn't want them to be prepared right. to rebut, right? So we, we did a lot more sort of massaging of the message. We brought a little bit more into each backstory just so that, you know, just like any, you do marketing and communications, Brandy. So like you have to like give the audience the why to listen, right? Like mm -hmm. why should I care about what you say beyond you just being a former quitter, which is still total bona fides. There are people who have this, Kelly has this amazing life experience, like amazing. Um, Renette has, you know, degrees up the yin yang or whatever. And that sort of also builds out their authority, if you will. Sure, the credibility so, is there, right? Pardon? I said, sure, like the credibility is there. They can try to knock it, but it, yeah. you, have, you have these women that have experience and are intelligent. Um, that that is hard to disarm when um, they're always, you know, talking about how we we shame women and and don't allow them, you know, to be independent and and all those types of things. So yeah, that makes a huge yeah. Difference. It was awesome. 
it was awesome with that the two guys that were up front that were that were really drilling you know bringing up all the first guy talked about rape you know what about in the cases of rape and i'm like okay i can talk about rape and then he you know keeps going and he's like and what about this and what about this and then the guy the guy that was beside him he, he after the other quitter testified he's and and liz testified he said, well, you know, I think it's, I, I would really like if you women would have the same love for the women that go through this and not be so judgmental to the women that go through this. And when he said that, one of the representatives that we had met with that had heard my story, she looks at me and she points at me because I hadn't testified yet. Oh. And so I was like, oh, I got something for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he's like, I wish you would you know, know about the women that, that, that have been through this. And so I start out and I'm like, you know, my accolades are different than the two women around me. I don't have degrees, I, but I'm a, you know, survivor of domestic abuse. I'm a, you know, post, and I went through all of my things and I was like, and my story is uniquely mine, but it's, and then I said representative, it's like the women that go into these clinics. And yes, but the funny thing was, as I'm talking, those two started talking. So they like, didn't want to hear, they wanted us to give respect and give, you know, honor to these women who've gone through it. But when a woman who's gone through it started talking, the two of them started talking and didn't even listen to what I had to say. Well, that's, that's the thing that gets me, Kelly, is like, they use all of us, right? As pawns, as you know, something that they can step up on their, you know, soapboxes and either campaign or, you know, feel better about themselves when they speak on, on camera. However, at the end of the day, they do not care. Yeah. And that's why I'm so, you know, still amped up because I've seen it throughout the several different elements to politics and, and, and lawmaking that how dare you, right? Like, you can say for two minutes, whatever this person has told you to say, but at the end of the day, I, I was angry, honestly. I, and I think I told this to Kelly. I was angry that they did that to Kelly. And because they weren't just doing it to Kelly, they do it to all of the women just like her. And that ticks me off like so much. <laughs> I know. Like, oh, <laughs> so it fired me up and all my nervousness went away and i was like oh we're gonna do this now <laughs> they teed you up for sure like, right oh yeah they did they teed me right up <laughs> <laughs> so tell us okay so we've heard kind of the beginning we've heard the middle so tell us how this beautiful story unfolds because it's still unfolding and then I, we have some questions to get to and i don't want to miss those so Tell us, tell us what happens next. Right, so remember, we only heard about this a month ago, like literally like three weeks ago of, of that at the time. Goes to the, the next week, it's calendared, right? Placed on, well, it survives, excuse me, sorry, step back. It survives both those weeks committees. So the next week they place it onto the full house and the full senate floor and this was so, just last week right this was just last week that that happened correct yeah beginning of last week right yeah. monday to monday wednesday monday yeah. wednesday right so um no um expert witnesses are heard only the people introducing the bill so the representative rudd was on the house side and then senator bowling is on the senate side and so you're you're we worked like endlessly getting them you know a letter from you for example because you're from Tennessee like you know all these different more more chunks of um, meat if you will that they can state firmly from the house floor from the senate floor it's, it's online and, we can, and, and I think that we're going to have some edited versions for you to watch it directly but it's a culmination of all that right I know and I'll say it because partly my job, but partly because I'm so proud of them. Um, the testimony from Annette and Kelly pushed it beyond, right? Yes, it's a Republican state and it's a supermajority and all that other stuff, but 
the, the power that both the representative and the senator could, could stand firmly and literally go to war and, and battle these naysayers that literally they're coming from their, their colleagues, right? Whatever they want to say, whatever soundbite that the abortion industry can harp back at them, both Representative Brad and both Senator Bowling were able to say, well, this just really crisp, solid with the, the fortification of the testimonies from our two quitters. So, and uh, another one of our um, colleagues as well came down. Um, so that, after all that, boom, 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 they, they vote. And so it passed the House on Monday. So the House of Representatives passed on Monday, and then it was moved, long story short, to Wednesday for Senate, and it passed the Senate. So technically, both houses of the Tennessee State House passed it. The Speaker of the House um, signed it Thursday, Friday. We got a message that Monday, Tuesday of this week, uh, Lieutenant Governor signed it. So it's right there, right there before the governor's signature. And then once the governor signs it, who's a very pro-life, very Republican guy, it will be in effect, Field Remains Bill passed into law effective July 1. Less than a month. Uh, Boom. Amazing. <laughs> and I have to say, Tennessee, anybody from Tennessee that's watching, I am proud of you. I am proud yeah. to be born and raised in Tennessee. So um, it gives me chills just to think about, like, this is this was our first time out, right? And what we were, I, I'm going to cry. I'm not, not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. What we were able to accomplish, um, it just, it it's exciting because, um, I know that there's so much more out there and some people may say, you know, hey, this, this seems so small, right? Like, because, you know, this isn't really, is this really ending abortion? You know, that, um, oh. you know, to the naysayers, I say, you know what, this is, these, this is, these are baby steps to get in the right direction. Like we're, we're respecting human life a step further. Um, right. And so I just have to tell you ladies, especially, thank you. Thank you for the sacrifice of leaving your home. Um, I know Liz, you've just moved into a new house. Like you're trying to get settled. Your boxes aren't even unpacked and you're running out the door. <laughs> Kelly, I know you got a big family and Annette, same thing. Like I'm just honored to get to work with you ladies. And, um, and while I wasn't there, my heart was there. And um, we are, we're very, very proud of all of you and excited. And that actually leads to another question. Someone said, how do I get you guys, you ladies, to come testify in my state, right? And so, right. Wh what do we tell them, Liz? Well, we're, we're, we will travel. You know? Yes, that's right. <laughs> like, um, you know, we're, our hotels.com is getting us yeah. some points, boom, boom, uh, you know, like everybody's frequent flyer miles, you know, like, no, seriously, um, for all intents and purposes, Brandy and I have been working very closely over the last few months, and I'm not gonna lie, like it was a very, at first, it's very different to go from a federal to a 50 state strategy. Mm -hmm. However, because of that, we need more people from across the country to let us know. I mean, it's literally me and now Kelly, you know, and like Kelly does other stuff, but like it can be overwhelming, but if you know of any law, or even for if you think that there are people who need to hear directly from our quitters, we will travel. That's that's what we want to do. And um, reach out to me. Obviously, my email is just elizabeth at prolove.com. You can reach out on our website. Right. But anytime you think that there is an opportunity for either us to testify or to speak or what have you, this is what we're here for, right? Um, also, Kelly had mentioned this and Annette had also too, it's like, it also adds to, um, the, I, I don't wanna put words in your mouth, but like the healing, right? Like you're able to use all that darkness 
for good. Right, Kelly? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's when the, when I got saved, that's what God told me he was going to make beauty from ashes. And that this is how he does that, you know, by telling my story. I mean, now I'm going to cry. I mean, that's. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, not, not much, not much more you can say about that. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And, it, and it also, you know, it, it also adds the fact that like, we're not alone in this, right? Like this organization is for many different entry points, right? Obviously our focus absolutely positively are quitters, right? We believe, Abby believes, and I believe because it makes sense totally that without abortion workers, you won't have abortion, right? Mm -hmm. She had the experience, Kelly had the experience, Net had the experience, all these people had experiences that when I'm taking the notes, right, they're so similar, right? But until this organization, nobody had the truth on purpose, right? Because the entire abortion industry for what, 60 years has purposely made people like me not think twice. And because I have spent at least 15 years of my political activism for it, I have to do whatever I can to get more people like my former self to shift. And if it's throughout the state, so be it. And, and we're going to do it because we want to do it and we have to do it. <laughs> That's awesome. And I, yeah. Liz, you just hit on something a minute ago that I think that is an important piece, especially if there is an abortion worker that comes across this video or is hanging out with us tonight. Um, it is an opportunity for you to leave that old life behind and um, find a community of people who have similar experiences that um, will not look down on you right, that um, will um, give you the opportunity to be able to engage with other people that um, you can share openly with and um, not um, sensationalize anything or it be shocking or anything like that. Can you, would you be able to share a little bit, Kelly, about what you've been able to experience with that um, and, and what that was like being able to go and share with, um, with other quitters? Yeah, I, I think Brandy, on top of that too, I want to add, you know, you have the opportunity to share your story publicly, but you are never required. It is not, you know, it's not an expectation. It's not a requirement. It's not even necessarily an encouragement. I mean, mm -hmm. they, there are a lot of um, safety because ultimately the organization and the people in the organization care about us, you know, care about us as quitters and never want to do anything that's going to put us in harm's way. And so, you know, while one of the reasons that people from outside of the state of Tennessee came in to testify inside the state of Tennessee is because people inside the state of Tennessee who were quitters were not comfortable testifying. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't forced on, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I, that, I want that to I'm, be known I'm as well, really that glad. there is I'm, opportunity. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to mean to interrupt you. I'm really there, glad that you made it. Like, thank you for saying that, Kelly. <laughs> and yeah. there's opportunity and it's always healing to tell your story, you know, but that may be to one person, that may be to our counselor, you know, that may be to Abby, that may be, to, to Jesus, you know, like it may be, it's always healing to tell your story, but you will never, the, the organization will never put you up front if they do not feel that you are in a, a good place to do that. And there are lots of safety nets and security things around that, you know, checking in and making sure you're okay, because it is very scary. And, and when you do it, it is very raw and it is very open. And so, you know, we want to make sure that everybody's going forward. Um, but with that, for me, I mean, I had told my story publicly several times, lots of times, but had left out the part about working in the clinic, 
because I was never comfortable around other people that had worked in the clinic. So when I got around other workers, there was this instant bond. You know, it's like people who, who are in a plane crash together, you know, they like have this because of the shared trauma, they have this bond that they wouldn't have had before that. It's the same kind of thing. Like every quitter that I've met and I've met a lot of them from all over the country, there's this instant sisterhood of, right. I know what you've been through. And I know what you're going through and not only behind the doors of the clinic, but at home, how it affected your home life, how it affected your family, how it affected your finances, you know, dreams that you still have, like all of that stuff. We don't even have to talk. I know you. Right. Um, and so, I mean, yeah. So that's what I wanted. Like Brandy said community. I was like, no, it's more of a family, but like, it's like a very, like the most odd group of family ever. Um, but beautiful, beautiful. Um, the other element that I wanted to add on that is we also have the bond on multiple traumas, for example, whether it's domestic stuff, um, chemical dependency, like being a loved one of people who've had addiction problems, you know, like that's something on the other side, there are very few people who understand that. And because I've had my random situations that literally I'm like, the Lord like put me in this situation so that I could relate more because normally people like me don't have any interaction about it. But all of a sudden I've been put on these, in these situations and thank goodness survived them to be like, okay, now Liz, even though that you're, you know, the vice president, lawyer, whatever, that human empathetic side of me leads in this organization because I, when I was going through my stuff, it was radio silence. Like I never felt like I could talk to people about it because I was, oh, you know, you're in, you're, you're not supposed to have these problems. You're supposed to, you know, know better or whatever. It is what it is, right? I think that just like any other counseling, spiritual organization perhaps, we tend to attract people who understand the different sides of things. And that's what I love about our organization. And quite frankly, and I've, we've worked at nonprofits before, right, Kelly and, and, and Brandy. And it's like, mm, no, it's, there's, there's a wall there, right? Unfortunately, even though if you, you want to put that wall up, it's going to come down eventually, right? You can't hide and not only that, it's like, you don't need to hide anymore. I think that's the piece that I love about being a part of this organization and the, the issues that I've dealt with like are like here. And I know that there are even bigger issues. And even with my issues, I know that um, I feel that um, camaraderie, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. Well, the truth is God can shine brightest in our brokenness, right? Um, because he's, we're able to allow him to, to fill that void that we have for whatever reason. And I will say that is something that's very special about this organization. Um, and I think that's why we're able to connect. I mean, we've all had, we've all had difficult paths that we've taken in one way or another to be able to get here. And, and I love a good comeback story. Right. And so, um, and that's, you know, my heart is absolutely, um, for quitters, um, for former abortion workers specifically. And we're thankful for you. We're also thankful for the work that you are doing. Um, and everybody has different roles to fill, right? And so this role that is being filled within government relations right now and being able to go and help wake up people that are, that are in slumber, basically, right? Like that are sleeping on this, that they might even consider themselves pro-life in um, name, um, and in the way that, you know, voting patterns and that sort of thing. But at the end of the day, they're the ones that are wanting to, to zoom past bills like this and not have anything to do with them because they don't want to have a part of that. It, you know, it makes things difficult for them. But um, when you have somebody who has the experience that our quitters have in front of you, it's really hard to ignore. It's really hard to ignore when they're able to share their experiences firsthand about some of the, the awful details 
that they have um, imprinted in their mind. And that's why we do some of the work that we do as well. Um, because some of the harrowing details that they have locked away and that com compartmentalization like Kelly was talking about earlier, specifically with healing, even um, that's, that's why we specialize in helping abortion workers the way that we do. So if you know of someone who's worked in the abortion industry, it doesn't have to be someone who's leaving right now. It doesn't have to be someone who left last year. It can be someone who's worked in the abortion industry at any time in their lives. And they may feel like they don't need the healing. Um, and that's okay. Let's connect with them because they might not even recognize they need the community. And then once the community happens, that's when they oftentimes recognize that maybe they do need a little bit of healing. Maybe there were things that were still out there um, that were left unchecked. So we're getting ready to wrap up tonight. We're almost to our hour mark, but I just have to tell you, ladies, again, I'm so, so proud of the work that you're doing. I'm excited to see what God continues to do um, in the lives of the workers that we're able to serve. And um, if, if you're watching this tonight and uh, you're sitting there and you feel compelled to help us rescue more workers or help us get um, the testimony to the individual states, you want to help us financially, um, you can make a gift to our organization by going to abortionworker.com, click on the donate tab. Um, you can also click on the support our work tab and see a little bit um, more details of some of the stuff that we're currently involved in. And finally, if you want to stay connected with our organization, um, you can also, you can get text from Abby specifically. So you can text none, N-O-N-E, to 53. 445. Again, that's none, N-O-N-E, to 53445. And um, she'll keep you up to date on some of the things that we have going on. If we have a special prayer request, she'll be able to reach out um, with that. If we have a special need, because we've had a, a worker come through or a rush of workers come through, she'll be able to communicate with you about that. And then sometimes just share the good, good stuff, right? Um, if you go to our website, you can see that we have a quitter of the month that we highlight each month. Um, you can go read Kelly's story specifically that's on there. So I encourage you to do that if you haven't done that already. Um, we love bragging on the hard work that our quitters have done. And we're just, again, we're honored to get to serve in this capacity beside you ladies. So any closing words, thoughts, anything? Do you want me to answer these questions really fast? Because I think well, they're good ones. Okay. We have what one do you got? Sure. Sure. Go for it. Um, so it talks about what impact this will have in the state of Tennessee and what if people don't agree that this incremental legislation actually makes a difference? What do we say? Any legislation makes a difference right. is what we say. Um, and yes, this could impact the state of Tennessee because now abortion facilities have to pay for cremation or burial of these babies, which means it cuts their bottom line which means it costs more money for them to operate, which means hopefully they will close down, which is why incremental legislation does make a difference. And not uh, only- that, We're not heading to any states anytime soon, but we want to. So let us know if you know of something, email Liz at Elizabeth at ProLove, it's in the chats. And yes, we need donations, prayers, presents, all of those things. We will take all of them for sure. And really quickly, I know we're at the end, but it also adds to the humanity of yep, the baby. You know, if we get one or two or five more people to start thinking and feeling and, yep. and experiencing that, we have to go at it all sides. Yep, absolutely. Yep, agree. It all matters. It all matters. So oh. again, thank you so much for being with us tonight. And um, we look forward to next month. Don't forget to sign up. Don't forget to be um, on our social media and following along when we share information about what we're going to be talking about next month. Kelly, we got to get to work on that and let us know. Maybe just send us a message, drop us a line and let us know what you want to hear about. And don't forget Pro-Life Women's Conference. If you haven't That's signed up, go. Oh, good go, go, point. Go. point. We're going to be in, we're going to be in Memphis, right? We keep talking about, we keep talking about Tennessee, but they, they got our hearts right now. We're going to be in Memphis. <laughs> Um, the end of June. So if you have not signed up, you yep. need to, we sold out last time and yep. um, we need, we need to get you there because we want to hang out with all of you. To be quite honest with yeah. you. So yep. Hope to see you there. Okay. Thank you so much. Hope everybody has a great night and we'll see you again next month. Talk to you soon. Take care. Thanks Liz. Thanks Liz. Bye ladies. <laughs>